Hi, welcome to Hacker Hip. One of the problems developers face when the microservice apps grows is tracing. It is very hard to trace where the call goes and it's very hard to track uh, the calls between one microservice to other microservice. Spring Sleuth solves this exact problem with Spring Cloud Sleuth, it introduces a unique ID called Trace ID that is unique among all the microservices for the rest call being gone. In this video, we will look into Spring Sleuth along with Zipkin. Zipkin is an open source distributed tracing system which collects all the logs which are pushed by Spring Sleuth and you can visualize the latency between each microservice calls so that you can improve along the way. It also helps uh, in viewing where the call breaked or where it's more taking time and all of that stuff. We will look into how to integrate Spring Sleuth along with Zipkin in Spring Boot applications. So let's dive in. So I have my Spring Tools open here. Let me go ahead and create a Spring Boot project, new Spring Starter project. And let me name it main service and I want dependencies for tracing so let me add the sleuth dependency which comes under spring cloud tracing the sleuth and the zipkin client I want both of those dependencies to be added for tracing now I have this main service project here I also need a spring boot starter web and a spring boot starter web services so let me add both of those dependencies. So I have added both Spring Boot Starter Web and Spring Boot Starter Web Services for the annotations required to build a REST web service. So let me go ahead and re-import the Maven project, update the project. It will update all the dependencies and downloads all the dependencies. I have the dependencies downloaded what I want to do is I want to add a controller class. So let me first add a package named com dot spring sleuth dot demo dot controller. Let me add the Java class main service controller. So for this class to be identified as a REST service. All I need to do is annotate with the REST controller, which is from Spring Framework Web Bind. So I had the controller done. Let me quickly add a logger. So I have my logger added here from logger factory. So the next thing is write a function which calls service one and service two which we are going to build later, it just returns uh, the response. So the function should be public, which re returns response entity of string and get sleuth test. That would be my function name and that's it. We need to give the endpoint mapping for this particular function. So let me put it as a get mapping and pass the endpoint get sleuth test. That would be my endpoint that we are supposed to call when we are calling this uh, web service. Now in this function, I need to call the service one, which internally calls the service two and then return the response. So all I need to do is return rest template so it's throwing an error we haven't defined the rest template yet so let me go ahead and do private rest template rest template and we need to auto wire this so that uh, spring configuration knows the call so that sleuth can add tracing to that particular uh, rest call Now we will call rest template dot get for object and the URL would be host 80 
81 slash service one. We have to build this URL and the response type would be response entity dot class. All right. So all we are doing here is calling the service one, which will return the response. So for tracing to be available, we need to add the loggers. So let me add a info logger so that we can trace this object. I'm here in main service calling service one. So that would be my logger there. So that's all you need to do. And the other thing we need to do is to identify a service, we need to define the spring application name. Spring dot application dot name equal to I will name it as main service. I want this service to be run on a particular port because here I defined as localhost 8081. I don't want to run the main service in 8081. You want to run it on a different port because all these microservices will be running on my machine. So I don't want to have that uh, exception of saying service already running in particular port or that port is being used. So I will define the port number server dot port has uh, 8082. That's all you need. So let's uh, try to run this main service and how does it look? So, so run as Spring Boot app. So it says uh, application failed to load because See, throw an error saying rest template uh, required a bean type of rest template. So we need to define a bean. We try to auto the rest template here, but there is no bean. So what we'll do is let's go ahead and create uh, that bean. So it would be a public function rest template get rest template. And what would it return is new rest template. That's all we need to do. There you go. Let me go ahead and run it again. So if you see here, the Tomcat started on 8082 as we defined the port. If I go back to my postman and try to hit localhost 8082 main service, let us see what happens. Looks like uh, the main service is not available. Hmm. Oh, so I had the endpoint as get sleuth test, uh, not the main service. So let me go back here and change it. So yeah, here I got a 500 error saying get request for localhost 8081 server service one connection refused because we haven't built that service yet. So the connection got refused. We haven't had the service yet. So I would let you guys to build the next two services similar to the same microservice. To save some time, I have already created the service one and service two. If I go to the service one, so I had this function called service one, uh, which has the endpoint slash service one. What it does is it internally calls a service two, which should be on eight port 8080. And then the port which this service runs is 8081. If you see the service two, it has the endpoint saying slash service two and it returns success calling spring sleuth. So let me go ahead and start these two services. Now we will be having our main service running on 8082, service one will be running on 8081 and service three, service two will be running on 8080. So let's go ahead and start these services. Before running the other services, uh, let me change this to string.class and what I would do is uh, there might be issues sometimes where it would be unable to convert this uh, response entity. So what I would do is return new response entity of string of response comma HTTP status dot okay. I need to import that. I also do like as a response status of HTTP 
https dot http status dot okay i think that should be good uh, we can go ahead and stop the main service and restart it again since we had changed some stuff so yeah we had all these services started main service service one and service two let us go ahead and hit this uh, spring sleuth test we got the success calling spring sleuth which is actually sent by service two to see that now we will see the magic of uh, spring sleuth so if you go here i will open main service so main service created this trace id if you see this uh, the trace id see spring sleuth automatically added this trace id and this is span id and span id is independent for each function where you have that logger so this differs between microservice to microservice but one thing that's common in all the microservices throughout this call is the trace id take a good look at this 2fba f6052671 now if i go to one and if you see that it's the same thing if the same trace id but here the span id was different because uh, it's a different microservice and if you look into the other the last uh, spring service 2 you'll see the same thing the trace id is same but the span id is different uh, and it says true the true value is actually for zipkin we added the zipkin library but if you come down a little bit here it shows there is an error connecting to http localhost 9411 so this is the zipkin error so we haven't started the zipkin zipkin is an independent service uh, that you need to deploy to cloud or wherever you want and point this to zipkin by default uh, if it's in the same instance uh, it would defaultly connect to localhost 944 9411 but in enterprise solutions like when you are in a real world project uh, you have to deploy the zipkin as a separate uh, application and get that endpoint and update this endpoint in the application properties now let's go ahead and start zipkin so you might be asking do we have to write one more microservice for zipkin no if you go to the zipkin project this is the zipkin project uh, so this had a clear explanation if you are using docker in your enterprise application there is a docker image uh, that zipkin open source zipkin provides you can download and just run on a particular instance on aws or ibm cloud or azure for me in local what i did is i already ran this command so that it downloaded me zipkin now what i have to do to run this is uh, I just need to run this command so that zipkin will be run on particular port so let me go back to terminal here and let me run the zipkin so it's starting so it looks like it started at port 9411 as we talked earlier zipkin provides uh, a ui to trace all these transactions uh, with particular transaction id that's provided by spring sleuth now let's go ahead to local post 9411 slash zipkin this is the default uh, endpoint the ui will be there and if you open this hmm, you see nothing here but you have to search uh, the recent transactions uh, happen so if i click on the search nothing is here because when we hit the endpoint we haven't had the zipkin up yet so let's do one more call here there you go we did one more call let's go back to zipkin and see we had main service which is calling uh, uh, service 2 and service 1 if you click on this what it did is uh, you called slash get sleuth test which internally called slash service 1 and which internally called uh, service 2 if you monitor clearly it also gave the time which it took for each microservices to respond back See, the endpoint slash service 2 responded in 23 milliseconds whereas service 1 responded in 59 milliseconds altogether the first endpoint we hit from postman took 111 seconds if you see here it's almost around the same time this way it is so useful for you to track a transaction end to end 
between all the microservices uh, in the microservice architecture when you hit an endpoint to get uh, let's say something like uh, account balance uh, the endpoint you call might be calling hundreds of microservices uh, uh, i might be exaggerating a little bit but it might be you might be calling uh, a couple of microservices behind uh, and you want to know you, you want to look, have a good look uh, of where the call went from each point so this will help greatly here you can also search by service name or trace id as well i can give the trace id here let me go back here and pick up the trace id main service has this uh, trace id which it created let me go back and try to search with this see it gave me this uh, so let me go ahead and hit it one more time and it would give me a trace id see the new trace id is 942e76 i will go back to zipkin ui and i will search the particular trace id and it gives me the complete transaction history and how much time it took for each microservice to respond back so in this video we looked into spring sleuth which provides a tracing capability spring sleuth is a tracing dependency that provided by spring framework uh, which we used to recap spring sleuth adds a tracing id and span id to particular rest call that's being called using rest template you can't call with any other way but spring sleuth is useful when you are using a rest template and call a rest service so that it automatically adds the trace id to the rest call and also the internal calls uh, to the particular logs uh, and we integrated that with zipkin all the logs what we are doing is uh, when we added that uh, zipkin dependency to the spring project a uh, spring boot project uh, it sends all the logs to zipkin if you look into that when we got the error uh, see it's trying to push uh, the logs to localhost 9411 api v2 spans uh, but the connection got refused so in the first place it didn't push now since we started the zipkin server it pushed the logs and we were able to see and trace all these uh, logs with trace id and we were also able to see the time it took for each particular service this way adding spring sleuth and zipkin to your microservice architecture helps you trace a transaction clearly and you know where error comes and where it actually broke and where which microservice is actually taking more time to respond paid applications that are available to do this job like dynatrace and all but if, if you are looking for a open source and do some cost saving and set up your own zipkin server in cloud which costs much much less uh, than you what you pay for dynatrace or splunk or anything I hope this helps. Uh, we will look into much more interesting concepts uh, in the coming up tutorials. Uh, as a reminder, if you are new here, please consider subscribing to the channel Hacker Game Project.